The episode begins as Arth and the Big Bear stroll together, finally reaching their destination. Arth apologizes to the bear for making him run so much the night before, and the bear reassures him, expressing his love for Arth's company and the desire to be with him forever. The scene transitions to a man playing the guitar with his family, engaging in dance and music. Arth then asks the Light Throne if there are any new trends, and the bear informs him about the artistic preferences in different regions of the fairy kingdom. In the north, specifically in the town of Shibia, people appreciate literature and aesthetic texts. In the east, there is a fondness for the prophet, while in the west, sculptures and historical artifacts like pyramids and the sphinx are cherished. The southern region, where they currently are, values music. Arth is delighted to hear this as he often enjoys the music while walking through the streets. However, he yawns and his eyes tear up, indicating his fatigue and the desire to sleep. The scene shifts to Arth and his bear friend standing in front of an old man who owns a hotel. They request accommodation for a week, and the old man informs them that he has two rooms next to each other. The focus then moves to the beautiful rooms, and Arth playfully refers to the bear as the shaggy-haired poet, a title that embarrasses the bear as he doesn't want to be called by that name. The bear turns to him, anger filling his eyes, and tells him to stop. Arth enters his room and rests on his bed. He recalls how fortunate he was when the genie bear came to him and saved him from that place, carrying him on his back to the city where he is now. Now, Arth can finally check out and get some sleep. The scene transitions to the next morning when Arth wakes up from his deep sleep, ready for some adventures. However, when he tries to get out of bed, he feels as if he can't move. He wonders if it's a programming error in the game or something else. But when he looks under the covers, he finds the genie sitting on top of him like a baby girl. At that moment, the short man enters and offers him breakfast. He is shocked to see Arth with the baby girl, misunderstanding the situation. Arth screams for help, calling on the big bear to rescue him. The bear arrives, and when he sees the scene, he smiles a silly smile, realizing that Arth has brought a girl into his room, and it seems like he's up to no good from their perspective. Arth explains that it's not what it looks like and that the girl came to him. The bear informs them that she must be kept away, but she refuses to leave. To their surprise, the girl is the queen of the genies. At this moment, the girl approaches, and the old man and the big bear are astonished when they learn that she came to apologize for what happened in the southern fortress. At this moment, everyone is surprised, and then the genie remembers what happened in the past. She informs them that she punished the responsible one with the yellow hair, as well as the man who runs the fortress. She also punished his daughter and all the soldiers under her command, totaling around 80 soldiers. Arth places his hand on her shoulder and asks how she specifically punished them. The genie explains that she summoned them to a special area and inflicted significant, almost fatal harm to them thirty times. She then demoted the girl with the yellow hair to the lowest rank among the soldiers. Everyone is amazed by this, and the blue-haired dragon tells them that it's her sister's nature. We now know that the genie is the sister of the girl with the blue robe. Arth tells her that there's no need to punish him further because he is now in the genie's land, and he loves that land very much. The genie is delighted by this and starts flirting with him, but her sister in the blue robe gets angry and hits her on the head. They argue with each other, and the blue-robed sister grabs her by the ears, scolding her to be silent or else she will be kicked out. Then, we see Arth, looking very astonished. The genie tells him, after a long discussion with her sister, that she must leave now. She apologizes to the housekeeper for the chaos she caused earlier, bids them farewell, and leaves. Arth asks if she was aware that the genies ignited a war with other countries. The old man responds, telling him to tea the dragonesses engaged in the highest battles against them. Then the bear informs him that if people find out about a dragon in the city, there will be chaos. They must remain silent. The old man tells Arth that he will bring him a meal, closes the door, and leaves. The giant bear tells Arth that he's lucky to have a beautiful girl like her and falls in love. He leaves the door, and six girls appear, apologizing for the sudden entrance. One of them, named Karen Vernier, explains that she heard about the bear with unruly hair and asks for help. 
Arth asks what exactly happened, and Karen shares that her daughter has disappeared, and she wants to find her. Arth offers Karen a cup of warm tea, and the girl apologizes for causing him panic. She introduces herself as Karen Vernier, part of the renowned noble Vernier family. Karen explains that her daughter always walks at the same time every day, but today she hasn't returned. The bear asks if they can transform between human and wolf forms, ensuring her safety even if attacked by a beast. Karen gives them a picture of her daughter, promising a reward if they find her. Arth takes the picture, and they agree to search for her. The scene shifts to Arth and the bear outside, where Arth apologizes for involving him in a task that should be his alone. Arth mentions that he will also charge a fee and asks for more food if he wants to thank him. As night falls, Arth realizes the distance is far, but the bear assures him that the gatekeeper saw her. Suddenly, Arth senses the presence of a monster. The bear confirms it, stating there are two on the right and one on the left. Monsters appear and attack Arth and the bear. But they overcome them, and Zaiton informs Arth that his ability to detect monsters is indeed beneficial, providing them with actual sustenance on the journey from the fortress. The screen appears in front of Arth, and Zaiton tells him that there is nothing but monsters, depleting their resources faster. However, he'll try to expand the search range to the maximum. He sees a group of monsters and something else, so Arth climbs onto the bear's back and runs away. Arth tells himself that he saw two things that weren't monsters. Next, we see Arth behind a rock activating long-range vision to see Miss Mina Vernier amidst the monsters. They need to do something before night falls. Arth asks Zaiton to surpass the goblins and throw that rare potion on Miss Mina. While monsters attack Mina, Arth shoots them with his bow, and Zaiton attacks them, reaching Miss Mina and tossing the potion on her. Seeing her wounds heal, the bear asks if she can withstand staying in her position longer, and she replies yes. Zaiton rejoices, ready to fight, and promises to protect her if things go wrong. He attacks and kills the monsters. After the fight, Zaiton tells Arth that he's amazing and that he learned how to contribute to the battle, making his life easier. Miss Mina thanks them for their support, and Zaiton introduces himself and Arth, explaining that her mother hired them to help find her. She expresses surprise, and Zaiton mentions his name, making her very happy as she realizes he's the famous Zaiton with unruly hair. Arth looks at her and emits a light sound. She asks him why she didn't transform into a wolf to resist more easily. The girl tells him that when she was walking, she smelled a sweet scent and everything suddenly became hazy. Soon, she found herself surrounded by goblins, unable to transform. Arth takes out a bottle and asks if she can drink it and transform again. The girl takes the bottle, drinks it, and sits on the ground, transforming into a beautiful large wolf with green eyes. Arth realizes that the antidote worked, confirming that someone poisoned her. He asks her to return to human form and requests Zaiton to take her back to the town. Zaiton asks Arth what he will do, and Arth says he's a bit exhausted and will rest here for a while before returning to the inn. Zaiton can't believe it, but he agrees, asking him not to be late. Zaiton takes the girl out of the forest. Afterward, Arth looks around, speaks to someone orders him to leave his hiding place, and wonders how long he'll stay hidden. He's certain the goblins had some valuable gear, with gear-wielding goblins, spear-wielders attacking from a distance, and sword-wielders in close combat. This is the only strategy that can make goblins fight as a team. Then he notices tracks leading to a secret stash, and suddenly, Arth throws a vial, exploding the area like a grenade. A person emerges, unknown to Arth, who yells at him for what he's doing. Arth explains that kidnapping and killing are evil deeds and questions whether the person is doing it willingly or has been hired. He doesn't know if this person is acting on his own or if someone paid him, but there's no harm in attacking an evil person. The man gets very angry, and as Arth looks at him, he senses that he's a real human, not just an in-game character. Leaving him might lead to trouble and disrupt the balance between humans and jinn. It could escalate into a war, and Arth knows the admins of extra life, well. They might be behind this. At that moment, the mysterious figure approached him to kill him, preventing anyone from learning anything. 
However, Arth managed to quickly evade him, then came from behind and delivered a blow to his back, known as the triangle strike. The man fell to the ground, and Arth explained that he altered his trajectory in the air to lessen the force of the blow. Despite that, it still caused significant damage. The man revealed himself as a human, expressing his desire to eliminate the genies. Arth, indifferent to the man's origin, stated that all that mattered was their ability to hold each other accountable. Suddenly, the man died and disappeared. Arth reflected on the idea that if they could acknowledge both their good and bad sides and walk alongside each other, it would be much better, whether the other person was a genie or a dragon. If conflict ensued, even humans would fight against them. Afterward, Arth wandered through the forest and encountered Zaitan and the girl. Zaitan inquired if Arth had apprehended his enemy, to which Arth replied affirmatively, claiming to have cleansed the area of all monsters. Zaitan congratulated him on his actions and invited him to join, but Arth declined, opting to walk alone. Zaitan then declared Arth as his human adventure partner from that day forward. Zaitan and Mina spent some time together, and Mina seemed attracted to him. Mina, somewhat embarrassed, confessed, I've heard many tales of your bravery, and I always wanted to meet you. When I did, you were so kind. Zaitan, still harboring resentment towards Arth for an earlier comment, teased him, saying, Have you forgotten what you said to me this morning? You want a beautiful girl falling in love with you, and Mina is indeed very beautiful. Mina, hugging Zaitan, expressed her desire to spend time with him. Arth, feeling uncomfortable, decided to leave them alone, saying, I'll leave you to it, and closed the door behind him. Later, Arth summoned the queen because he wanted to speak with her. She was delighted and asked, What is it that you want? Do you confess your love to me? Arth, using a pen, playfully struck her face, saying, I can't believe what happened to you, but you needed to know. The queen suggested that the man and the genie should not be allowed to fight, and Arth agreed, urging her to prevent any issues. Grateful for his intervention, the queen thanked Arth, who informed her that they would meet again. Before leaving, she asked when she could see him next, expressing her gratitude for his actions that day. Arth, surprised, thought to himself about the queen's way of involving herself so much, similar to what the castle commander's son used to do. As the scene shifted, Arth spoke with the old man who owned the inn, informing him of his departure. The old man expressed regret, saying, We'll miss you here. Arth apologized but mentioned that he needed to go because he was running low on the fortified oil and had to make some repairs to his bow. Suddenly, Zaitan entered the scene. So, Arth asked Zaitan how things had been going since then. Zaitan, feeling embarrassed, hesitated, and then the girl with him appeared from behind. At that moment, Arth chuckled and said, I think I know the answer to that. Zaitan then informed him that she expressed a desire to accompany him. Arth and the old man were delighted to hear this. Zaitan then told them that they needed to head to the Fenerier Palace near the castle. He acknowledged that Arth would return to his human village, expressing sadness that he couldn't carry him on his back. Arth reassured Zaitan, telling him not to worry about it, as he could manage all his affairs. Arth mentioned how much he enjoyed being Zaitan's partner and suggested they do it again sometime. They bid farewell to each other, and the old man added that Arth had a long journey home. Then, Arth revealed that he had something hidden in his pocket and called for his bird, Pakasha, to come. The old man was surprised since even the royal family rarely rode the giant bird. Arth explained that it was a joke, hoping it would work. Suddenly, they were both astonished by the arrival of the giant bird. Arth mounted it and soared into the air. He told the old man to disembark before reaching his town, as chaos would ensue if the bird went there. They landed, and Arth prepared a feast for the bird as a token of gratitude. He instructed Pakasha to eat until full. The bird happily devoured all the food, and in return, it offered a shiny feather as a symbol of friendship and love. Arth was thrilled, realizing the powerful effect of the feather. They thanked the bird and bid it farewell.